September the 15th, I believe. September the 15th. Year of our Lord 2020. The 16th, I'm sorry. Wednesday the 16th. And we left you last week in the book of Acts. And we're going back to the book of Acts. We started in Acts 8. We've been in the entire book of Acts for many weeks now since we've been dealing with the coronavirus. And we're now in the eighth chapter. First, we went one through four. Today, we're going five through eight. Just taking little chunks, but very juicy, succulent chunks of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here we are, Acts, the eighth chapter, verse five, where it says, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Now, in the first four verses, it talked about how Saul, and he wasn't Paul yet, he was, he was still Shual, Saul at the time, and he was quite a fellow. He was hurting people. They were maiming people. They were imprisoning people. They set up situations where people were being stoned and hung. And sometimes I really get deep into what all they did to Christians during the first century. It was, it was terrible. It was ruthless. It was horrible. And it makes me sad when I see Christians who are lackadaisical now on their walk with the Lord. They can go to church and they don't have to go to church. They can listen to God only knows who and listen to that. But here it is. Those people 2,000 years ago, they had to walk the walk. They had to talk the talk. They had to stand for Jesus next, first, and last. And sometimes it meant their death. Sometimes it meant that they had to make enemies of the Sanhedrin Council. Sometimes they made enemies with the Kohen Hagadol, a high priest, but they still stood for Jesus. Let me give you a demonstration of that. When we end at verse 3, it says, Saul made havoc of the church, entering into every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to Pasio, prison. Therefore, verse 4 says, those scattered, went everywhere, but they didn't go somewhere like today and uh, get on Facebook and start whining and crying and moping and going on like people are doing today. The Bible says they preach the word. They continue to preach the word. They continue to tell people who Jesus is. They continue to tell people about the power of the Holy Ghost. They continue to tell people that Jesus is real. My brothers and my sisters, verse 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Verse 6, and the multitudes with one accord heeded these things. When you see one accord, that's a word in the Hebrew is called yada. It meant that everybody was on one accord. Wouldn't it be something today if church people, now I'm not talking about Christians, if church people were on one accord for the Lord. But they're not. We laugh and talk about people. We gossip about people. We malign people. We lay snares and traps for our preachers. Uh, uh, we tear our pastors down. We tear our church down. But wouldn't it be something if people today in America said we're going to stand for Jesus 100%. It doesn't matter if you're in Tennessee, if you're in Texas, if you're in California, if you're in Montana, if you're in New York, if you're in Pennsylvania, if you're in Georgia, wherever you are, I'm going to stand for Jesus. If something's happening to my fellow Christians across the country, then it's happening to me. I'm going to fall down on my knees and pray for those people. We're going to fast for those people. We'll send money to those. We'll do whatever we need to do to stand. Yakta, the operative word here. Look at me, those of you, and you hope you have your Bibles open. It's one accord. Yakta, standing the Lord. And the multitudes with one accord heeded these things, spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Now, death was eminent. People could get killed at any time, but they were still doing signs and wonders for the Lord. They were still preaching for the Lord. They were still fasting for the Lord. They were still teaching for the Lord. Wouldn't it be something if we did that with our
says anything about mad at the president if he says anything about mad at anybody who's uh, who gives social commentary on behavior of people today. But my brothers and my sisters, we've got to stand for Jesus, be excited for Jesus, be exuberant for Jesus in everything we do, not just when we show up in church, not just Sometimes you need to apologize to God or repent for some of the things that we do. 
it can be said of a man, he lived to glorify Christ, then this life is a life. Every Christian ought to live on my memorial, might be he preached Christ crucified, and the disciples of Jesus should cry all the time, amen and amen. My brothers and my sisters, as we get ready to end this, still in verse 7, come out of many who were possessed, and many were paralyzed, and lame, and were healed. When you have an unclean spirit, there's a multiplicity of things that occur to you, and can occur to your body, that can occur to your mind. The Bible gives you an example of some of them. It says that some of the people were possessed, that some of the people were paralyzed, that some of the people were lame, and then some of the people, out of all of that, they became healed. Verse 8 says, and there was a great joy in the city. That's, I forgot to give you, that's the message title. There was great joy in the city for the things that Philip did, preaching and healing people in the name of Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, as I get ready to close, America is in trouble today on a multiplicity of levels. America doesn't know which way it's going to go. People are already saying that a civil war could begin to ensue in America. Some people are saying that, that something bad might happen no matter who wins the presidential election in just 50 days. Some people are saying, I don't know what's going to happen. Our young people, they don't seem to be focused. Some people are saying our commerce is going down. Some people say our, our economy is going down. Some people are saying, what are we going to still do about the millions of people that are uh, need jobs? What are we going to do about some of the people that need help? What are we going to do? And some of our Democratic and Republican brothers are looking the other way. But I can hear to tell you, I'm looking to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that created the heavens and the earth. There's still joy in America. We can still have joy in this country. We've got to pray that people get saved. We've got to pray that people get released from of these unclean spirits. I may get in trouble in this YouTube, but as we get ready to go, there was a young man on Trevor North's show the other night. He was so depressing. He was so saying that we, 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 what are we, we, we gonna do? I want to wait. I wish I could reach through that television and say, young man, is nothing that we, we, we can do. You need to give it to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You need to know that Jesus is real. He needed to know that there's only one solution to the problem, and his name is Jesus. He needed to know to get in the Bible and go from Genesis to Malachi, from Matthew to the book of Revelation. It's not about we, 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 we can't do nothing. We need to turn it over to Jesus. We need to live for Jesus. We need to stand for Jesus. When people are down, give them Jesus. We need to tell people, I get depressed. I don't know which way I'm going to go. I know the way you need to go. You need to get on on your knees and give it to Jesus. You need to live for Jesus. You need to die for Jesus. You need to stand for Jesus. There's only one person and his name is Jesus. And he gave us a comforter. And that comforter is the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to say. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to do. And you'll be able to take authority over any and every situation in your life when you allow the power of the Holy Ghost to take control of who and what you are. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to do. 